Uh, on the button here with Pocket Kings, a couple hands later after Tuggy just hugely heroes me, uh, I get raised by Brat Pack and comes to me. I'm sitting on just over 30 big blinds and I go for a 3 bet. And notice my sizing, I did not pot this at all. Like if I had a pot this that's uh, 190,000 plus 60, so 250, um, I would have been able to put it up to 345,000. If I make it 345,000 out of my 137,000, a third of my stack, uh, and he jams, I'm going to have to fold because we've already gone over this. Brad Pack hasn't been four betting light. And if I make this 220, if I make it 300 and something thousand, I have to call off uh, if anybody else jams. I probably would have called off against Johnny White as he is the short guy on the table. And I, man, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I would have probably, probably not thinking about it. I probably should three bet this and fold if I get jammed on by anybody. Because like I said, the money was getting significant. And I don't, I haven't seen anybody spazzing out preflop too much. Um, so I really like my three bet size. It allows me to three bet less and accomplish everything I want. If I get four bet, I can fold. I might pick up the pot right here. Uh, probably not against Brat Pack, but I'm light years ahead of his raised call range with Kings double su Kings uh, suited with you know two helping side cards. Uh, we get a peel. Awesome flop for me. I block up pretty much all the two pair combinations. If he's on 8-5, well, then I have two kings, two queens, three nines, and backdoor straight cards as well. And generally, you know, on a flop this good for me, I'm committed. And there's nothing that I can do except for bet and hope to get the money in good. And he just folds his hand. I was definitely, definitely bet calling on this board for... You know, I do block up all the pairs, and you just don't have a stack that I can really be bet folding. We've got another fairly annoying pot coming up here in which uh, I lose. So we'll just start it off with very standard open on 40 big blinds. I'm going to fold to any 3-bet. Do not make the mistake peeling double paired hands against the 3-bet because you just aren't deep enough. But we get a peel and flop an amazing, you know, ace, ace, five board. For my hand, I really can't ask for, well, I, I could ask for, say, ace, king, five. That would be better. And that's my dog asking for food. But this is a great board as far as I'm concerned. And I was going to bet and call it off if Brat Pack jammed. So he check calls me, and hands I'm expecting to see from him are... X, ace XXX and king high flush draws, maybe pocket kings, maybe pocket queens. Um, and that's pretty much it. That, that defines his range pretty strongly. So the turn falls the jack of hearts and he checks. I have the option to bet this again, but I don't want to bet, make the pot bigger and be faced with a river bet by him. Like, if I bet this, I have nothing to protect my hand against. I'm either ahead or, I'm either ahead, you know, 70 plus percent. Um, I'm either 100% against the flush. I could be absolutely crushed against ace-jack on this turn. And I'm prepared to invest, say, that maybe another 200,000 in the pot. I would rather make that bet on the river after he checks to me um, for value or if he leads into me on the river, I can look him up for the 200,000. What do I want to avoid doing is betting 200,000 on this turn, having him call, and then having him bet a big amount into me on the river, uh, putting me to a real, real decision. So I check it back, comes probably with the worst card in the world for me, and he just bets into me. We'll never know if he was ahead with ace-jack on the turn, but I, I can't look him up because, you know, even if he did have pocket kings, I'm dead in the water anyways.